Hello, today we're going to talk about memory and observation. There are three parts of this lesson, observation skills, memory skills, and detective skills. So you have been learning about paying attention to your surroundings and using your observation skills. It's very important to always observe the things around you. I'm going to show you a brief video. I want you to look at it closely and count how many times you see the players pass the ball. Ready? How many of you counted the correct number of passes? How many of you saw the gorilla the first time she walked through? So you see, observation is very important. It's important to observe everything around you. What does it mean to observe? To observe means to watch things around you, to notice small details, and to pay close attention to the things around you. Have you ever heard of detectives? Detectives solve crimes. They observe and they find clues. Can anyone tell me any detectives they know from TV? Some detectives that I know from TV are Sherlock Holmes, Dora the Explorer, Diego, Scooby-Doo, Goofy from the Mickey Mouse Playhouse, Nancy Drew, Inspector Gadget, Blue's Clues, The Magic School Bus, and the detectives on shows like CSI. Now we are going to practice your observation and memory skills. I'm going to show you a picture of a park. Your job is to observe everything in the park closely. I will give you some time to take a good look at the park and everything in it. I'm depending on you to remember everything. Ready? Okay, go. Now I need your help to tell me what you remember seeing. Raise your hands and tell me what you saw. Your teacher will be writing this on the board. Here are some items I remember. There was a swing, a slide, clouds, a bench, a bike, a walkway, flowers, bushes, grass, a kite, a lady sitting on a bench, and a seesaw. What we just used is called short-term memory. You used your short-term memory on the things you observed. Short-term memory is where you can hold a small amount of information in your mind for a short period of time. How many of you think you could remember all of these items in the park next month? You probably won't. That is why it's so important to write down your observations, because you probably won't be able to remember things that are not important for very long. Long-term memory is memory that can last as little as a few days or as long as a few decades. That's 10, 20, or even 30 years. Short-term memory becomes long-term memory through the process of rehearsal and repetition. Rehearsal is when you practice something over and over again. A great example is the ABC song. Do you remember when you learned your ABCs? 
I bet when you learned your ABCs, you practiced it over and over again. Practice makes perfect. Sometimes your motor skills like running and jumping are learned by repetition and meaningful association, like pairing a smell or a picture of something. How many of you have had popcorn? The smell of popcorn may bring back your memory of the Ferris wheel ride at the fair, or even a movie that you saw at the movie theater. Now, do you think you could remember all of the items in the park next week? Probably not. This is because the changes to the objects are in your short-term memory, but not in your long-term memory. So, how could you get this into your long-term memory? Another good way is to write your observations down. If I had an accurate list of these items next month, I bet it would help me tell someone what was in the park. Did you know that making observations and writing them down helps in real police investigations? Witnesses are unreliable, since most people's short-term memory is not that great and they usually don't write things down right away. When you are a witness to a crime, you should write down descriptions right away if you can. An example would be writing down the license plate of a car that hits another car and then drives off. Now we are going to move on to our final activity. For this activity, each student will need the fingerprints type chart, a number two pencil, clear tape, scratch paper, and a blank hand card. Fingerprints are unique from person to person, and everyone has different fingerprints. Other visible human characteristics, like facial features and hairstyles, change, but your fingerprints stay the same unless your fingers are injured. Fingerprints are also useful to detectives and at crime scenes. They have helped governments around the world to identify criminals for more than 100 years. A fingerprint at a crime scene, though, only tells investigators that a person was there, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they committed the crime. There are three different types of fingerprints. That means that all of the people in the world have one of these three kinds of fingerprints. They either have a loop, a whorl, or an arch. Look at your fingers. See if you have a loop, a whorl, or an arch. What about your friend beside you? Do they have a loop, or a whorl, or an arch? All right, now we're going to do our final activity. First, we're going to take out our hand diagram. Now, we're going to take out our number two pencil and color a dark blotch like this. Once you finish coloring the dark blotch, take your finger and run it across the pencil markings. Now, take a piece of tape and press the sticky side onto your finger. Then you will gently peel the tape off of your finger. Place the tape onto the printed hand card and remember to match it to the appropriate finger. Make a fingerprint for each one of your fingers on one hand. Now let's review what we've learned today. Memory and observation skills are very important. Your memory is not very good or reliable. You can make your observation skills more useful by writing things down. Short-term memory is where you can hold a small amount of information in your mind for a short period of time. Long-term memory is where data can be stored for long periods of time. You can improve your short and long-term memory with repetition and practice. Repetition and practice enhance both short-term and long-term memory. As the saying goes, practice makes perfect. Your motor skills, like running and jumping, are learned by practice and repetition. We also learned eyewitnesses aren't as reliable as fingerprint evidence. If you were a detective, you would want to use hard evidence, such as fingerprints, rather than relying on an eyewitness. I hope you've all enjoyed yourselves. Have a great day.